state what is meant by center of gravity of a body. So center of gravity of any body, for example, if I have a person standing, he has weight of his face, of his arms, of his body, of his legs and all of that. To make the calculation simpler, we say that we just pick one point where almost all of the weight of the body is considered to act such that I can replace this person by that point and say that whatever weight of this person was is acting at this particular point. So it's considered to act at one point. So the center of gravity of a body is then just a point where entire weight of the body is considered to act. Next, a uniform square sign with sides of length 0.68 meters is fixed at its corner points A and B to the wall. The sign is also supported by a wire CD as shown in this figure. So here we can see that this is a sign. It's hinged to the wall like this and the weight is acting downwards and it's attached with a wire like this where the tension in the wire is 54 newtons. The sign has weight W and center of gravity at point E. The sign is held in a vertical plane with side BC horizontal. The wire is at an angle of 35 degrees to the side BC. The tension in the wire is 54 newtons. The force exerted on the sign at B is only in vertical direction. So the force that is exerted on the sign at this point is in the vertical direction only. Calculate the vertical component of the tension in the wire. So this is tension. It would have two components. One upwards as it's slanted upwards and it's going to the left. So one component would be in this direction. So the vertical component of tension is this one. If this angle is 35 degrees, then this is the sine component, which is 54 sine 35 degrees. So the vertical component of the tension T is 54 newtons times sine 35 degrees which is 31 newtons now explain why the force on sine at b does not have a moment about point a so if you look at this thing point a is directly below point b what does that mean that means that the line of action of the force at B is passing through the point A and if the line of action passes through a particular point it does not has a moment about that point because the perpendicular distance from that from B to A does not exist there is no perpendicular distance it's a parallel distance happening over here so the perpendicular distance which is zero would mean that there is no moment about point A for B. So you can say something like, it's for one mark, that the line of action of force at B passes through point A, which implies perpendicular distance is zero. Hence, the moment would be zero. Now, by taking moments about point A, show that the weight of the sign is 150 Newton. So we have to take moments about A. So if you go back, look at this thing. The moments about point A, the first one is coming from this vertical component, this one, about A. So it's like this. So the perpendicular distance for this component is this distance 0 0.68. Next, you have this cos component of this one and that component about point A has a distance of 0 0.68 meters as well. These components are then balanced by the moment of this W about point A like this. The distance perpendicular distance from W to A is half of that of this one which would be then 0 0.34 meters. So this gives you an equation 
What I've used is the principle of moments, anti-clockwise moment sum is equal to the moment sum clockwise, which gives you 54 sine 35, this one, multiplied by its distance, 0 0.68, this one. So you multiply 0 0.68, and then its cos component, which is 54, the horizontal component, cos 35, whose distance is also 0 0.68. Actually, this is getting a bit messy. Let me move it a bit here. So this would be 0 0.68. And this is then balanced by the, op the other moment, which is coming from the weight. And the moment coming from the weight is the weight times the distance, perpendicular distance, which is 0 0.34. Now, I'll take this on the next page. And this gives you, if you solve this for W, you get 150 newtons. Now, calculate the total force exerted by the wall on the signs at point A and point B. So, at point A and point B, we want the vertical force that is exerted. If you look at this figure again, the vertical force at point A and B is so they're saying that there is some net vertical force acting on points A and B, right? Which means that that force, if I take this, this is the vertical component and the other vertical component is this. So if I take this component and subtract the weight from it, I get the net force that would be the total net force acting on point A and B, which as this component, 54 sine 35 minus W. So that would be 54 sine 35 minus W. And then you have to take the absolute of this, or you can say, uh, if I'm taking this as uh, let's take this weight as positive and this one as negative. So this would be 30 minus 31 plus 150 and this would be 120 newtons. Next, the sign in B is held together by nuts and balls. One of the nuts vertically falls vertically from rest through a distance of 4.8 meters. So it's falling 4.8 meters and it's covering this length 4.8 meters when it falls, then it lands on the pavement with the speed 9.2 meters per second. So before it hits the pavement, its speed is 9.2 meters per second. For the nut falling from the sign to the pavement, determine the ratio of change in gravitational potential energy to the final kinetic energy. So the change in gravitational potential energy is mgh. The mass of this thing is, we don't have the mass, right? So uh, we want to find the ratios, right? So this would be m times 9.81 times the height that it's covering. So it travels a distance of 4.8, and when it touches the ground, its distance is 0. So 4.8 minus 0. That's 4.8. What about the final kinetic energy? It's half mv squared. We have its velocity when it hits the ground as 9.2. So it's half m into 9.2 squared. Now the ratio of these two, delta Ep over Ek, is m times 9.81 times 4.8 divided by half into m times 9.2 squared. mm cancels, and this gives you a ratio of 1.1.